There's been some funny things on Twitter here today. Now, I know some people just don't care about what's going on on Twitter, but you can't deny it right now. It's definitely the place to be. Hey, isn't this great? I got three different things. Three of them right here. First and foremost, we got a video. I'm not going to play it or anything like that. It's just an old man wandering around the stage. And to my friends down south, it's going to be Thanksgiving. You guys get yourself a nice four-day long weekend to celebrate one of the most recently disrespected holidays that are out there uh, hopefully have the opportunity to go and spend some good quality time with friends and family and enjoy a fantastic feast and joe biden in an attempt to just show how progressive he is uh, brings on stage or i don't know if he's greeted by some interracial couple i'm sure that it was just a purely a quinky of a goddamn dink that it was this specific couple to come up on stage but oh boy he definitely had a doozy because of course joe biden did and listen if he wasn't the president of the united states and he was sincere with the things that he says like this dude would be hilarious he would be bringing down the house okay dave Chappelle would have to fucking up his game a little bit but here's what he says to the little boy on stage okay as you can tell okay maybe i'll just go ahead ahead and blow it up here for a second okay not like they would but you can see white lady a couple of you know well actually four four children right there and then yes uh, the father is uh it looks to be latino or something like that so yeah joe goes to the oldest child which is kind of weird and out of character for joe but at least his statements aren't out of his own character okay yeah, biden to a little boy little boy i would say what would you put him 10 10 or something like that and again that's way too old for joe you should have went for it you you know that uh he must have been gunning for that one in the white there right in the front okay but even his handlers were like Come on, Joe, just no, no. So he goes up, yes, uh, to the oldest child. You're allowed to do anything you want. You can steal a pumpkin if you want. <laughs> anything you want to do. Of all the things, the first thing that he goes to, okay, he sees, oh, there's one of them colors on stage. I bet you they probably want to take something. So it's like, legitimately, this dude would be funny as fuck. But he's the president and he's barely coherent at this point in time. It's like, okay, cool. Isn't this the same dude who uh, made the historic declaration that Columbus Day would also be indigenous people recognition? I don't fucking know. Something smoke and feathery shit. But it's real funny, too. Uh, just as an aside here, Daily Mail or Daily Wire, sorry, had this little clip out here. And uh, they got the little official badge over here on Twitter after being verified and all that stuff. They've been ver verified for a long time. But wasn't this the same outlet that just outed themselves or at least their owner, Jeremy, the appropriately titled boring came out and said mm, oh, there needs to be a two-tier system here once again okay mm, let me expose my elitism daily wire has uh, they make quite a few good points but then at the same time it still is old tradcon neocon garbage but hey man they clipped a video and it's like fucking it all checks out joe biden's a creep the sky is blue grass is green snow is white and abundant on the ground right now and of course, just some absolute greatness right here. And this is what the internet tried to take away from you. The Matrix tried to take this away from everybody. You got Andrew Tate over here, okay? I don't know if this just came across his timeline or whatever, but some lady... Oh, it looks like, yeah, replying to a, you know, Andrew Tate tweet, okay? I'm looking for a top G. Can anyone recommend one? And of course, she's thirst trapping. And she's engaged, for Christ's sakes. Like, she's at least got a wedding band on. No, yeah, she's got a wedding band on. But it's not exactly the highest resolution picture. It might be in an engagement ring or something like that. But, yeah, no. Uh, look, what are you doing right here? Okay, okay, I'm looking for a top G. Can anyone recommend one? And then Tate blocked haram this is the best part about going on twitter right now because obviously i follow tate you can see it oh you actually can't see it on the obs but i follow him because of course i do one of my favorite things to do on twitter right now is to just scroll through and whenever i see a tate clip that's up there it's just him calling things haram it's my favorite thing to be seeing right now and something else i was scrolling through the timeline here a little bit earlier today the nh fucking l now i'm up here in canada okay and if you know anything about canada it's closely associated with hockey okay yeah obviously you know it's nauseating i'm not a big fan i punched out over a decade ago at this point in time last time i really cared about all this stuff was probably when the bruins won the cup in 2011 that was the last time and i just started to slowly check out of sports in general in on and around that time so just seeing this stuff and seeing these different formerly lauded and respected professional sports institutions just collapse and 
descend into wokeness from afar is a little bit disheartening because I know like a lot of people get nostalgic for certain childhood properties like different cartoons that you'd resonate with and we just talked about yes the unfortunate suicide of Jason David Frank the original green and white ranger and it turns out that he actually you know uh, did the deed after he had uh, a fight fight with his wife so or I guess ex-wife because they were filing paperwork or whatever but regardless I hate being right all the time and especially about that situation but you know you could just fucking call it the way that it is but speaking of which like I've known the NHL has sucked for a while he just never anticipated it getting this bad. So they did some virtue signaling right here, okay? The NHL is proud to support this past weekend's trans a team trans draft tournament in a middle er, Middleton, Wisconsin. Now, okay, um like shit like this happens all the fucking time, and especially yeah, in the Midwest and then up here in Canada all the time you have little, you know, games of shinny break out and it's just you know unorganized team games but look like this happened at a little you know well-attended hall or whatever okay but yeah you'd have you know men and women playing on the same team and normally whoever has more men on their team they ended up winning but regardless okay this one is specifically about a trans draft i what like trans draft beer like it used to be an ipa and now it identifies as budweiser like what the fuck are we talking about here uh this was the first tournament comprised entirely of transgender and non-binary players in fucking wisconsin how far and wide did you have to come out to go and collect enough people in order to play a fucking game okay with around 80 folks participating holy fuck it combed the entire state of wisconsin because I don't know if that shit flies all that far in the Midwest, but uh, maybe I'm just out of touch when it comes to all this stuff. That is uh, th that is why we need clarification like this. So, men playing on women's teams, says the Herbinger and the vessel to which the NHL quite possibly sealed their own fate. And, and, I, and I understand that, okay, diehard Leafs fans, Habs fans, okay, they'll look at this and they'll just, I don't know, bristle with disgust and they'll continue to watch their game. But this just puts more people off than it actually brings in. Like, nobody gives a fuck that you're being or inclusive or whatever. And I don't know what the fucking purple logo's about at this point in time. It used to be, per or it used to be black, but hey, man. They'll probably change that back in February. As of right now, they're just all about they're just all about this trans stuff. Oh, apparently, NHL pride, right? And uh, yeah, here's their reply. And uh, oh boy, it's uh, it's it's causing a stir, just to say the least, because they turned off um, any replies that were on there. I'm not too sure what the amount of replies are on this one. Actually, we could probably check this out, uh, you know, officially, okay, just to see how badly they're getting ratioed on this one. But okay, so uh, men's playing on women's team. It's not that bad. It's actually not that bad, which is kind of weird. But okay, yeah. So men playing on women's teams, okay. And then the NHL responds with a really baffling, baffling response. But considering their point of origin, like I'm pretty sure the NHL's headquarters, is it in Toronto or is it in New York? But it's a de facto mouthpiece of the uh, Canadian government. Okay, let's just call that what it is as well. Trans women are women. Trans men are men. Non-binary identity is real. But not that type of Israel, though. Um... That's cool, though. What does that have to do with hockey? And then at the same time, okay, if trans men are men, how many trans men, trans men, are in the NHL right now? How many trans women are in the NHL right now? No, this is just, once again, virtue signaling points that are just supposed to get you attention from the right places or anything like that. Like, I, I don't know, man, but at least Breitbart over here, because, of course, Breitbart would have coverage on this. Okay, trans women are women. NHL goes ultra woke, supports all trans and non-binary hockey tournament. Why? Was it being sponsored? I, I, who does this benefit? Okay. On Tuesday, the NHL tweeted out the news of this tournament, I guess. There's the original tweet, and then, yes, our, our good friend Code over there picking all this shit up. And it's like, okay, so here's some of the replies that are down there to the trans women or women. Now, let's see if we can uh, find anybody who has some wit and humor about it, okay? Or is there just going to be a bunch of people being offended by this type of stuff? Because it's like, oh, okay, cool. So I tried to find, it's like, okay, how's the NHL doing right now? Because I know the season just started and I don't watch any, you know, mainstream television coverage on literally anything at this point. So I don't know if the NHL is thriving, surviving, what the fuck is going on right now. I tried to type in NHL ratings first week or any sort of, you know, metrics to see how well the league is doing. And I couldn't come up with anything. 
anything at all. So is no coverage, good coverage is silence, violence. Like how far are we going to go down this SJW rabbit hole here in NHL? If you aren't putting out any of the numbers right there, kind of tells me a couple of things that are out there. Okay. You're trying to pander to a group who legendarily never shows up to support the things that they're claiming to support. So, uh, we'll take o- Julie Ann uh, po- uh, Potifa. She'll take over here to begin with. Okay. Then I'm sure you'll start drafting trans men onto men's hockey teams. If you don't, you're a bigot and homophobic. Am I right? Exactly. We need to have equity on all of the sports teams going forward. So, you know what that means. Well, uh, the fourth line is not going to get any more playing time. We'll just go ahead and say that. Uh, Jesse Kelly, turn off professional sports, walk away, and never turn back. Well, not all professional sports. And again, I think uh, sports, maybe a little bit of a hot take, is one of the biggest wastes of time that you can possibly sink any of your free time into uh, instead of doing anything of benefit. If you're fully engaged in a sport, and even if you're betting on it, like betting is, well... I think uh, Andrew Tate sums it up appropriately. Haram. Like, I've done work before and had, like, a baseball game on in the background. I'm not fully engaged in it, but, you know, hey, you just have it on in the background. That's about as far as I've got, but I haven't done that in five, six years at this point in time. But I understand, like, going to a game or something with family or friends, you know, spending quality time doing some networking or whatever the hell you want to do. Going to the event, enjoying the event, like, that's that's fine, okay? If it's a special occasion, you can go ahead and do that. But the people that just, you know, mark, carve out an entire day, an entire week to watch all of the slate of games and like the NFL, they spend the entire Sunday, okay? They're checked in for Thursday night games, okay? And then, uh, especially this time around, oh my God, it's Thanksgiving. You need to, you can start first thing in the morning. You can go all the way through the evening. They got whatever, three or four games. Like people who do that waste so much of their fucking time and they think that they're validated because other men who are multimillionaires, who are people who have reached the pinnacle of their potential, they achieve something, and because you bought some merchandise from some kids in Malaysia, you are just on the same level as them? Doesn't really compute, but that's an argument as old as time. If it's something you enjoy, that's fine, but... Like in all things, moderation. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Uh, Benja Johnson. Benja Johnson out here. Hey, normie sports fans, perhaps you should stop funding woke leagues that hate you and your values. If every NHL fan who believes in biological sex stopped watching or buying tickets, this shit would stop real fucking fast. I, yeah, yeah, I would agree. Okay, and case in point, uh, one of the most quote-unquote controversial experiments that was out there in the previous year, okay, and I know that it just wrapped up, that whole live golf thing. LIV had had all of the ooh, evil Saudi money backing it up. It's funny, uh, Saudis are evil when they're funding alternatives, but at the same time, when you're asking them to turn on the oil pipes, oh, they're some of the best people in the world now. Mm, kind of a funny disconnect that's out there. But no, no, no. Uh, Live Live Golf was getting all of that fucking heat because all of the traditionalists over in the PGA was like, uh, you guys, um, you can't go do that because we have all the prestige over in the PGA. And it's like, well, they they got a lot of money and uh, it seems like a little bit of an updated scheme that they're running over there so all of the top players most of the top players went over there and started participating in those games and the pga was just coping and seething over on the side saying well you can't come play in our majors and i was like well cool we're gonna go over there and make the same amount of money we would make if we were playing in those majors week after week after week so you go ahead and do that and they're like no okay we'll uh, make a change because people are actually gonna have to watch the majors and we kind of need the stars in order to come over so there was an experiment that was going on right there okay they showed that they could in an instant and i understand that an individual sport is not quite the same as an entire sports league as a team sport is but if the xfl does it right for the third time it can prove that there's going to be some sort of competition or some sort of changes that could happen, but it sounds like they're also kind of buddy-buddy with the NFL, so there's nothing really going to change in any of these big professional sports leagues. At the individual level, like the UFC is doing it right, uh, live with their alternative to the PGA seems to be on track right there. Boxing, for as much shit as people like to give the whole influencer sphere that's out there, they're at least generating some buzz and a lot of big fucking paydays for people out there, so there's always going to be a thirst for competition and for people to watch and bet not bet on that competition and if anybody has the money or the will or the desire to create an alternative to any of the big four that are out there there's plenty of money on the table okay
But anyways, uh, that was a nice aside for that one. Uh, David Hookstead, uh, that name sounds familiar. If trans women are women, shouldn't the NHL completely support eliminating the sport being divided by men and women? If there's no biological difference, lol, then, <laughs> then only have hockey. No men's hockey, no women's hockey, just hockey. How will that work out? Oh yes, just men. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay, because I think I've told the story before, but I used to work security at the local arena here in Grand Prairie uh, back during the time when I was in college. Very tumultuous time, very hectic time, and I did enjoy working, uh, especially that one job uh, at the arena. I got to see a whole bunch of different interesting events that were down there, and one opportunity was to get to see the uh, women's national hockey team, okay? And if you don't know anything about international female hockey, which you probably don't unless you're in Canada, that is uh, like the creme de la creme. That is the peak of female sports. That team right there, they are at the apex. It's always between them and the United States, and every once in a while, one of the Scandinavian women's teams tries to sneak in there. But always the battle for the gold is between those two teams right there, and they are practically indistinguishable. They are the one and the one A of running that entire scene. Like, there's just such a talent gap between them and everybody else on a consistent basis. that There was even talks, it was like, what the fuck are we going to do? Like, what's the point of the entire round-robin system if you always have the USA against Canada at the end of the day? So it was pretty cool to see them, okay? Like, the best team in the entire world come up here and play an exhibition game. And it's like, okay, yeah, no, that's cool. It was well promoted, okay. We had an entire staff that was out there. Got to meet and see some of those girls in person. And yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a sight to behold. And then also work security for their after party or their after game banquet, which was... Yeah, no, very great as well. But anyways, yeah, like I said, it was well publicized. Okay, everybody knew that it was coming. It wasn't it wasn't like this is a scrub women's team, lol. But when the puck dropped in a stadium that holds like what it like, what does that arena hold? Like eight thousand there was like maybe a hundred and fifty people in the entirety including security personnel that was there. Like, nobody turned out to him, okay? And it's like, okay, maybe it was because of the competition. And it's like, okay, cool. It was just the, the local assemblyman, or, and a local assembly of uh, firefight was it firefighters and police officers or firefighters or police officers? Regardless, it was their pickup team against the women's national team. And it's like, wow, okay, you got this top tier. And this is what I was thinking in my head, at least at the time. It's like, you got this top tier team that continues to just crush all the opposition. Like these girls are absolutely no joke in their field. They got shut out five to nothing. From a bunch of guys, okay? A bunch of fucking reservists who pick up fucking sticks and shoot the puck around the parking lot. Like, there is no organization to that team. And they just absolutely dog-walked the women's national team. At that point in time, I was like, bro, anybody that I hear making the arguments that men, uh, that women's sports is just as good as female sports, female sports just as good as male sports, got it right this time. There's no argument at this point in time, okay? It's not like anybody wasn't trying or anything like that. Like, the dudes weren't throwing body checks or anything like that. There was absolutely no hitting going on. That was purely a skill-based game. And they fucking sucked, okay? Like, no two ways about it. It was like, wow, this is actually happening, huh? So for all those people who are like, support our girls that are out there. Oh my god, female sports just needs more exposure. Bro, the WNBA loses hemorrhages money every single year. The Chicago Sky, is that the female uh, WNBA team? Uh, they had their parade in Chicago and... Uh, there were more floats in the parade than people attending the festivities. It's like, Christ almighty, okay, um, there's been, yeah, there's been a historical first in hockey, and this isn't one that's, you know, like a Johnny-come-lately or anything like that. Like, this happened way back in the cut for a team that was just debuting in the league. Like, this isn't the Tampa Bay Lightning, okay? Yeah, this happened for the Tampa Bay Lightning way back in 1992. I don't personally remember this, but this is a story that's been out there and, you know, just the, the go-to for all the activist gym teachers that were out there, like, even back in the day. Like, see, see, women can play with boys, too, because there was this one girl who played goaltender for the Tampa Bay Lightning once. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's go through this story here real quick. First female NHL player recalls amazing Lightning debut. Yep, yeah, no, uh, 28 years ago this week. Uh, this was published in yeah, 2020. Okay, so September 25th, 2020. Actually, September 23, or 23rd, sorry, 1992. Yeah, I was a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed two-year-old. 
Menon Ramu, whatever, uh, made history when she stepped on the ice in Tampa Bay. My heart, my heart was beating so fast, I thought it would uh, come out of my chest. Uh, but don't worry, you got two big tits to, that uh, would uh, block your chest to make sure your heart does not beat out of it. And you got a rib cage there as well, and you got chest protector because you are also goalie. Anyways, uh, the date was September 23rd, 1992, and the then 20-year-old became the first woman to play an NHL game. Her team, the brand new team. Tampa Bay Lightning. It was like, bro, didn't you guys like have a expansion draft and you, had, you what? You just had to go pick up somebody's girlfriend to play fucking net or what? Uh, that uh, the walk uh, from the locker room to the ice was probably the most uh, nerve wracking I had ever been in my life. But this was also Tampa Bay, the Lightning, an expansion team, 1992. Don't worry about embarrassing yourself in front of the millions and millions of fans because. Nobody gave a fuck about the Tampa Bay Lightning prior to when they won the cup over the Calgary Flames, sort of, in 2004. Fuck, that sucked. Back when I gave a fuck about the NHL, I was a big Calgary Flames fan, but whatever. Uh, she faced off against the, San, uh, the St. Louis Blues, another team that recently just got really good. Like, they were popping for a minute because they traded for Gretzky from L.A. and... I fucking forget. Anyways, uh, Remu in goal, played one period, allowed two goals on nine shots. And guess what, bro? Um, Not like she started the game or anything like that. I think she came in and she played either the second or third period. This is something like that. But this was a fucking pre-season game. So she wasn't even going up against like the Brett Hull St. Louis Blues team. Was he on the Blues at that point in time? Maybe. Might have had Al McKinnis, so I don't think that she was facing a fucking Al McKinnis slap shot or anything like that. Nine shots, two goals, okay? Like, if you're not even that aware of hockey, okay, that is, that is fucking terrible. You would get yanked out of the game, okay? Any goaltender would get yanked out of the game on that one because it's so rare. It's such a poor performance, but it's a historic first, and it's also a preseason, so it, it got them headlines at the time. As a story, yep, that's been out there forever. Oh my god, there's been a girl in a professional sports game. It's so stunning and brave. But since then, <laughs> hasn't been any other women in hockey because <laughs> there are biological differences between men and women. Men, at a physicality standpoint, are just purely superior. Sorry to say, okay, you can point to your fucking examples that are out there, okay? Oh, the world's strongest woman, uh, yep, uh, she could, she could, uh, bench press you i bet and it's like yeah she specialized at that but take a random chick off the streets and yeah i'm stronger than her i'm faster than her all of that sham okay and especially when you get to the top tier nhl level hockey players that are out there there's no woman who is at the same level of training as that that can hold a hand or a candle to that. Sorry, it just doesn't happen. But yeah, Greg Price right there is like, he makes a very good point. The NHL should definitely let a biological woman line up against Alexander Ovechkin to see how that theory works out for him. Exactly. Ig fucking exactly. That's my guy right there, Alex Ovechkin. But I wish you nothing but the best, the NHL, okay? There's a lot of kids that work their entire life and their dream is to be a part of the NHL, but. You guys keep making stupid fucking statements like this? Well, there won't be an audience for any of those kids because you guys are polluting the minds of your potential audience that are out there. So, with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.